Why don't you just close your eyes? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that you break every yoke. Destroy every work of the devil. Set your people free in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're looking at Matthew chapter 17. And we're looking at verse 19 and verse 20. In verse 19, the latter part of verse 19, Why could not we cast him out? The disciples of Jesus Christ were surprised because a problem came to them. And it was not the usual problem, the common problem, the day-to-day -day problem, the run-of-the-mill problem. It was a special problem. And then they prayed, they did everything they knew how to do, but they couldn't make any headway. And, be, and when Jesus came, the father of the boys said, If you can do anything, help us. The Lord will do everything. He will help you in Jesus' name. And in a very simple way, he commanded, and that evil spirit came out. And then the disciples were so much astonished and amazed. And they came to Jesus, they said, but why? We tried to. And in the past, maybe you've tried to pray, and you've tried to get this out of your life, that out of your life, and it didn't, it didn't go. Some people will say, maybe it's the will of God. It should remain there. No, suffering is not the will of God for you. Sickness is not the will of God for you. Failure is not the will of God for you. And then they said, why couldn't we? And Jesus said in verse 20, Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, something is coming your way. Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith, as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, get ready to say something, and that thing you say to be a declaration. That thing you say to be a decree. And it shall be done in Jesus' name. Ye shall say unto which mountain? Which one? You know, there are many people, they are busy saying to that mountain, the mountain that has nothing to do with them. But it says, this particular one confronting your life, it is going. I said, it is going. You shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea. And it says, it shall remove. It shall remove. It shall remove. Everybody, can you say that with me? It shall remove. It's going in Jesus' name. And then Jesus sent, said something so surprising. I think those disciples will be very much surprised when he now said, And nothing shall be impossible unto you. That time has now come. You know, when Jesus said, ye shall say unto this mountain, I'm just wondering, and many people have wondered in the past, what is that mountain? I don't know whether you've heard of John Boyan. How many of you have heard of John Boyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress? And thank you, God bless you. When he first became a Christian, and then the devil was teach, teasing him and tempting him and trying him, he said, if you really have faith, you should be able to tell this mountain there, move out of that place. And then John Boyan said, that was a challenge. Because I couldn't say to that mountain move, do I really have faith? Now the Lord is not telling you to say to every mountain here and there. It's the one that confronts you. This mountain. You have nothing to do with the mountain in that other state you read about in geography. That has nothing to do with you. But this particular mountain. If you have any particular mountain confronting your life and your progress. We are here to remove this thing. And it is going in Jesus name. And that's the reason I'm asking the question to start with, what is a mountain? What did Jesus actually mean when he said mountain? Number one, it means perpetual problems preventing progress. Perpetual problems preventing progress. If there is any problem in your life, in your family, any problem around you that is preventing your progress, that is the mountain. Perpetual problems preventing progress. Number two, what's a mountain? As we said, we come over here 
here for just one thing. We're not going to beat about the bush and touch this and touch that. Just one thing. It is this mountain we are confronting and it is going in Jesus' name. It is a worldly witch weakening warriors. Somebody is a great warrior and he had promised himself, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to conquer this and conquer that. All of a sudden, there is a worldly weight, a weight coming from the world and it weakens the warrior that all the ambition of before the goals or before the dreams or before the heights or before everything he thought he would do, he cannot do it. That is the mountain. And I came to tell you that mountain confronting your life. I'm going to remove it in Jesus' name. Now, Number three is lofty legions, lofty legions that limit life. Lofty legions limiting life. Look at this man there. He ran to Jesus and then eventually he began to say something, saying outside here from him and saying, What have I got to do with you? That Jesus of Nazareth, have you come here to torment me? That man's life was at a standstill. There was something within him that couldn't allow him to do what he knew in life he could have done. Lofty, high, long standing legions. And Jesus said, what is your name? And he said, we're legions because I'm legion because we're many. And Jesus said, come out. And he came out. Long standing legions or lofty legions, limiting life. It is going in Jesus name. I say, what is mountain after all? It's formidable foes fighting fiercely. Formidable, formidable foes, enemy that will not allow you to, you want to go this way, and then the enemy is, is formidable, it's unconquerable, and it's always there, and so what am I going to do, and then you say, I'm going to turn this way again, by the time you turn this direction, the enemy is there again, formidable force, fighting you fiercely, and is coming to an end. Because if he shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What are mountains? They are demonic diseases defying deliverance. They're, you know, demons, that, they're just there. The disease is just there. I try this pill, I try that lotion, I that, that, try that other thing, try this way, try that way. Everything is defying solution. And I'm saying, what am I going to do? There's a mountain there before you. Thank God you're here because this thing will go. I said, this thing will go. It will go in Jesus' name. I'm talking about satanic suffering, scourging saints. You know, somebody is a believer, is a real child of God, and he's saying, Pastor, I cannot understand. I'm a child, I'm born again. And by the grace of God, I live righteous life. And there's a kind of suffering in my life that is just there. It's this courage. It's stinging me. It's like a spiritual scorpion. And when it is there, I don't know myself. I don't know what I'm going to do. I examine my life. Is it this? Is it this? Is it that? And honestly, I cannot find out where something has gone wrong. That's a satanic kind of scorpion stinging you. That mountain is going. I said that mountain is going. Now what's mountain is hidden hunters, uh, hidden hunters, hindering holiness. You know, there are people, if they, they say, I believe holiness for my heart, for my soul, for my mind, for my head. I believe holiness intellectually. I believe holiness completely. I believe holiness. You cannot convince me that holiness is not. I believe it, but there's a hunter. is hunting after my life. As I want to live that life like this, there's that hunt. It's hunting me down, hunting me down. And it is this hidden hunter, hindering holiness. That's a mountain. We are getting rid of that thing. Now you understand, the Lord was not talking about a physical mountain, something tangible, something touchable, something pushable something something you can touch and push it's talking okay, about this spiritual entity and thank god there's enough power here that can move that mountain away look at your life and i'm telling you that mountain you see right now you will see it never more in jesus name 
I'm, I'm talking to you on racing irresistible mountain movers. And you know, when, when Moses sent out uh, those uh, spies, they came back and they said, Moses, you know what? Those people are giants and we are like grasshoppers. I'm not here to race up grasshoppers. I'm racing up champions. I'm racing up mountain movers. By the time this thing gets inside your soul, inside your mind, inside your spirit, inside your head, inside your blood system, inside your veins, you will rise up like a giant you will rise up like a mountain mover and you and i i and you you and i all of us together and i say this mountain get ready now get ready now get ready i say this mountain in the name of jesus move it's going i said it's going it will go in jesus name point number one why do mountains remain immovable why do mountains remain immovable? Now, point number two, what means can remove the immovable? What means can remove the immovable? That's that thing that has been in your life, has been in your career, in your profession, and it appears immovable. What are the means by which you can remove that thing? Number three, where? Are the movers of immovables? Where are the movers of immovables? The authority here tonight, the anointing here tonight will drive away that sin out of your life in Jesus' name. Number one, very quickly, why do mountains remain immovable? We're not going to beat about the bushes right there. They asked Jesus, they said, why can we not cast him out? Look at verse 20, and Jesus said, because of your unbelief. That's all. Not because, because you are not an apostle. No. Because you are just a disciple? No. Because you are just a you know, young convert? No. Because you are a lady? No. Because you are a student? No. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. And if you will say, by the grace of God, I believe in God. How many of you believe in God here? I believe in God. And that God is the creator of the universe, the heavens and the earth. He is mighty not to remove all my problems. Unbelief get away in their lives in Jesus. Jesus name. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Anybody there, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is the King of Kings. With him all things are possible. Are you there? I believe in the Holy Ghost. I said I believe in the Holy Ghost. And if the spirit that dwells in, that raised up Jesus Christ dwells in you, that spirit will quicken your mortal body. That spirit will take away the sickness. That spirit will cancel failure in your life. I believe in the Father. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Ghost. Unbelief has nothing to do in my heart, in my mind, and I come to you in faith. I said I come to you in faith. I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen people having HIV. I've seen them healed. I've seen lame people walking. I've seen all kinds of things. When I mention the name of Jesus against the mountain in your life, it will go in Jesus' name. Why do mountains remain immovable? Because of unbelief. Point number two, what means can remove the immovable? Think about your life. The immovable. Think about Moses. Pharaoh appeared immovable. The Red Sea appeared immovable. Think about Joshua. The Jericho walls appeared immovable. And think about Elijah. Elijah, Ahab, and Jezebel, enemies, terrible foes, they, they appeared immovable. And by faith, they moved out those things out of the way. And Jesus said, if ye have faith, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ah, wonderful. Faith as grain of mustard, very small faith will remove a big mountain. Mountains are going. I said mountains are going. That thing that had been there for many, many years, they're going in Jesus' name. And do you remember by faith Abel? By faith Noah? By faith Abraham? By faith Isaac? By faith Jacob? Everybody is by faith. By faith Rahab? Everybody is by faith. By faith Moses? By faith everybody. And if you also come join the queue, Abraham is there, Gideon is there, Samuel is there. By faith, by faith, I join the queue and I say I'm one of them. I said I'm one of them. And by faith, all those things before me, they're going in Jesus' name. 
And Jesus said, if ye have faith, if ye have faith, I will not, I will, I will not attempt to change the name, uh, the words of Jesus. But you see, let me tell you something. Now it says, you are there in the crowd. As you are there in the crowd, if you have faith, if you have faith, if you have faith, that's a man in the crowd. Then you raise up your hand and say, Lord Jesus, I have faith. And then Jesus changes that sentence a little bit. He says, since you have faith. If you have faith, you are part of the crowd. Then you single out yourself and then you raise up your hand. You say, Lord, I believe in you. I believe you cannot fail. I believe you love me. I believe your promises are yes and amen. And then Jesus says, since you have faith. Since you have faith. You. Since you have faith. Am I talking about you? Single yourself out. Since you have faith, ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And it shall remove. It shall remove. What are you? It shall remove. It is going in Jesus' name. Point number three. Where are the movers of the immovable today? Where are the movers of the immovable today? I told you already, by faith, Moses, by faith, Abraham, by faith, every one of them. You see, that's how they did it. Moses moved Pharaoh out of the way. You move your Pharaoh out of the way. You know, there's a promised land for you. You are getting there. And if Pharaoh is standing there, it's by faith. That, that Pharaoh was a mountain at that time. And Pharaoh was moved out of the way by faith. Here is Joshua. Here comes Joshua. And he says, Moses done his deed, his own thing, at his own time. Today is my day. And Jericho was or the mountain in the, in the case of Joshua. And Joshua moved out the Jericho walls out of the way. It is your turn. You'll move it out of the way. Here is Gideon. Gideon said, mine is not Pharaoh. And Gideon said, mine is not Jericho walls. Mine are the Midianites. And the Lord said, arise, thou man of valor, and move all these Midianites out of the way. You're going to move everything out of the way in Jesus' name. David comes and he says, mine is not Pharaoh, and mine is not Jericho, and mine is not the Midianites. Uh, David, David said, mine is Goliath. And he said, Goliath, I come to you in the name of the Lord whom you have defied. This day, this day, everybody say, this day, yeah. I will give your body to the fowls of the air. And he moved him out of the way and he came into the kingdom. Whatever is preventing you to come to the kingdom where God has appointed you to be is moving out of the way in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then here is Peter. He was, you know, by that beautiful gate, his soul was not Pharaoh. Peter was not confronted by Pharaoh, by, you know, by River Jordan, by, River, by the Red Sea. His soul was, look at this 40-year man that was born lame. And he says, silver and gold have I none. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He laid on son, he pulled him up, and that man rose up and he began to walk. Everybody came when it was their turn. Now it is your turn. I said, now it is your turn. Immovables are moving out of the way in Jesus' name. And you know, if you are going to move mountain, I, I can see Moses when he moved the mountain. All hindrances and all disturbances and everything, he pushed out of the way. Anybody put, he pushed out, then he remained, then he stood and he looked at it like this. And he says, Pharaoh, let my people go. Look at your mountain, eyeball to eyeball and face to face. No fear in your heart, only faith in your heart. I will say, Jesus told me, I will say, I will say, I will say to this mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be so now you put up no disturbance put everything your hand down now put everything down you cannot be moving out and sitting down like this comfortably and crossing your leg because this is mountain moving session this is mountain moving session where are you this is your mountain moving session talk to this mountain say to this mountain command this mountain move this mountain out of your life it's long enough you move this thing out of your life it must not be there again it must not be there again what will hinder you from making in progress what will hinder you from being what you ought to be this mountain is going 
this mountain is moving this mountain is getting out of your way move this mountain away move this mountain away you shall say you shall say you shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be cast into the sea it shall be so it shall be done it shall be done it shall be done it shall be done it's going to be done that sickness will go, that infirmity will go, that mental problem will go, that challenge will go, and that failure will go away from your life because moving mountains. When mountains move, when mountains move, when mountains move, you are telling the Lord right now with assurance, you are telling the Lord right now with courage, you are telling the Lord right now with confidence, let the mountain move. Let the mountain move. Let the mountain move. It is going, it has to go. It has to go. It has to go. It has to go. Whatever difficulty, whatever challenge, whatever hindrance, whatever mountain, whatever thing has been persistent in your life, hindering you from being what you ought to be, what you ought to do, it is going. Let it move. Let it move. Let it move. Let it move. Take the words of Jesus. There's no doubt, no shadow of doubt. Take the words of Jesus. If your faith has a grain of more such seed, it shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea. It shall remove. It shall remove. It shall remove. And nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Get ready, get ready, it's moving now. Get ready, it is moving. Get ready, it is moving. Get ready, it's moving. This is the time. This is your moment. This is your hour. In Jesus' name we pray. And the champion said, and the Davids of today, and the Moses of today, and the Joshua of today, and the Elijahs of today, and the people of God, the soldiers of today, they say, Why don't you raise up that and Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because of the assurance we have in Christ that if we shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, it's going to be done. I command this mountain in this brother's life, in this sister's life, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, you said nothing shall be impossible. Every sickness will be healed. Every infirmity taken away. Demonic oppression attacks taken away. I command you demonic attack, oppression, affliction. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, that head that is making noise, I silence that voice right now. And I pray, be healed, be delivered in Jesus' name. Epilepsy, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Any sickness in your body, any kind of pain in your body, it cannot remain there. It will not remain there. I command that sickness, I command that pain, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe. Lord, we believe. Every problem mentioned by any brother, mentioned by any sister, any child here, I command that problem, you will not remain there. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm the miracle in every life. Brother, you've got your miracle. Sister, you've got your miracle. It is done. It is done. It is done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. I am free. I said I am free. Where are you? I am free. Where are you? I said I am free. You are healed. You are delivered. You are freed. You are set free completely in Jesus' name.